Joe Drake. What's up, Joe? How you doing, man? Good. How are you? It's good to see you, man. Good, good to see hug. you. Good to see you, man. What's up, Big Daddy? <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm good. So this is Joe. We're gonna end up doing. What are we doing here? What are we looking at? We Washing this <laughs> nasty roof. That's what you're going. Watching to this do. nasty roof. Clean yeah. Up. Yeah. We're gonna clean it, man. The good news is, is and it's typically this way. Like, I'd say. 20% of the time or less do people actually need a full roof clean you're yeah. in that category yeah. that south side is looking good there's a few portions on the front on that side that I think we need to hit but we should be able to blend it, it with the front trees overhanging and I can tell all those trees and stuff and so yeah everything's yeah. been cut down away from the house okay the way. yeah so the good news is is it's really just this side so you'll end up saving saving some money there Yeehaw. and you know where you where you don't need to spend it these days, let's not, right? All right, awesome. <laughs> awesome yeah. man. I spend it on everything else. I might as well not spend it here. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. Well, we'll try to take care of you, man, and we'll we'll get everything cleaned up for you. All right, cool. All right, thanks, Joe. I trust you, hundred <laughs> percent. I'm gonna try to give you guys a couple of pro tips if I can. Pro tips. Pro. All right, so we're out here at a customer's house. We're gonna look at this roof. Look right here on this roof here, Scott. You see all those black streaks? Yeah. So that's what we're looking at. But you know, if you come over here, you look at, at Joe's house, look at this. You don't, do you see any of that? All right. That is typically, and not typically, it is because this is our south facing side. So the north facing side is gonna be on the back. We're gonna walk around and look at all that. But a pro tip is if you're here on site with a customer, this is the value of getting on site instead of doing everything virtually. I also know there's times where you have to do it virtually in your business, you don't have enough time, it's whatever. But if you can prioritize getting on site, if the customer was here right now, I would use this as an opportunity to do two things. I would point out this person's roof and I would say, Joe, like kind of, you see what's going on here? You see how you don't, I would do the same thing we just did in this video. I would say that is because the north facing side doesn't get as much sun as the south facing side. So that, that water is not able to dry on the asphalt um, quick enough. The sun's not able to dry it so that algae can just thrive. That's what you're seeing up there is algae, those dark, ugly streaks. Everything I'm saying right now is it's doing two things. It's positioning myself as an expert because I know what I'm talking about without me having to say, hey, I know what I'm talking about. We're a really great business. We want to find ways to explain that without having to just say those words, that's one way to do it. It also does a second thing that I don't think people prioritize enough, which is a keeping up with the Joneses mentality. If I'm pointing out other roofs, I am, I am letting him know, hey, other neighbors have this. You could be the one with a clean roof. You may not think that that means anything, but I promise from selling thousands of roofs, it works. It works. It does make people think, okay, well, I can see that my other neighbors have it. I don't want to have it. It also just positions yourself as an expert as you know what you're talking about. So if Joe was here, we'd be walking around. Another pro tip would be the more the customer's talking, the better. When I jump out of the car, like I mentioned, I'm assessing everything. I'm looking at the driveway. I'm looking at the house, other ways to add value. But the first thing I'm doing when I step out of the car is so uh, doing my normal introduction, hey, Brady Riding. It's nice to meet you. And then I'm saying, so what are we looking at here? And then I just shut up. I let him take care of the rest. He walks me around this property. We end up seeing things like he's like, well, I've just got these, I've got these streaks on my roof, man. I don't understand it. And let me just explain from here. I guarantee you it's on everything that faces this direction and this direction. Everything that faces this direction and this direction is not going to have it. I already know that from doing this a bunch of times, but I'm going to let Joe show me. So he's positioning himself as the leader of this negotiation and I'm not pushing him or anything. What we want to do inside of a sale is we want to lead people to a no brainer decision. We don't ever want to push them. We don't ever want to touch them. It's kind of like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen people herd hogs, but <clears throat> if you watch them, they're herding these hogs into a trailer just like that. And they ride on horses or whatever beside them. They don't ever touch them. They just get close and they nudge them in a direction, right? And so we want to herd the hog. We don't want to push him. We just want to lead him. And so allowing Joe to tell me everything positions him as he's in control of the negotiation. And so I look here. I can see it here. This is for two reasons. One, he's got these trees here that shade it. So Scott, if you get a good shot of this, may be hard to tell from the camera, but a trained eye can see there are some streaks here. This is what's tough about roof cleaning. He's got, and it is, it's from the shade of the trees. He's got some on this like southern facing side that's on this side, but it's because these trees are shaded. If you step back 
and you look at that side, it's a lot more bright orange. You can see shadows from the trees right now, but that's not what I'm talking about. I can just see and tell that he's got a little bit of dark um, streaks starting to develop. So I'm taking note of that as we're walking around. Remember, Joe's still in control. He's talking. He's like, I really don't even know what this, I'm just telling you things that I've heard a bunch of times. I really don't even know what that stuff is, right? I'm taking mental note. I'm still letting him talk. I'm just shutting up. I'm going to let him continue to talk and wait for my opportunity to educate so it doesn't feel like I'm forcing anything. Walking around here, and there it is. This is a perfect shot to tell the difference. Look at this roof. You see that? Isn't that crazy, dude? Look at that. You can see this side here that gets portion of sun. It dries that moisture, so it's, it's drying it before it has an opportunity to develop into algae. But he's actually got some like physical budding that's starting over here. And when it pops into this orange type looking mold, it's actually really difficult to get off. So he's got a lot of like, I wouldn't say it's the craziest, most advanced I've ever seen, but it's bad. And a lot of times people don't even know, like if Joe called for a house wash, this would be a perfect, perfect education opportunity to show him the difference in the color of his roof. You don't even really have to push it a whole lot. You can just say, have you ever noticed this? And then let the rest happen naturally. That's us herding the hogs and he'll go, what the heck is it? I've never seen it. Then he'll be seen it on everybody's roof as he's driving around the neighborhood or driving around other areas. You don't really, I'm sure everybody else can relate to this, until you've started doing pressure washing or become aware of it, it's kind of like a car. You buy a car and you've never seen that car on the road until you end up buying one. You see it everywhere. You think you're unique. You think you're really cool and you're a Camaro, but everybody has them. Same thing here. You don't know until you know that it's here and then you know that it's everywhere. And so I would want to make him aware of that. But as I look back here, I'm stepping back. I'm just taking you on a journey, basically, literally exactly what I would do if Joe was here. I'm like, okay, well, yeah, I can see it. You definitely need a roof clean, right? Um, and so there's, there's multiple things I'm going to do on this bid. One thing is you need to come up with your skeleton price. You've heard it before. We talk about it. Your skeleton price is just a per square foot charge that you're gonna come up with. Uh, you can check out uh, our video courses. I can go into more detail in there on how to actually calculate your square footage charge. But you come up with your square footage charge and then you will move it up and down based off of those three factors, the three Ds that we talk about, which is duration, dirtiness, and difficulty. Right now, everything lies in the eye of the beholder. This one's pretty simple for us, right? Um, it's not super difficult. It is dirty, but it's not super dirty. Um, and, and since the other side's not, a lot of times people are worried like, oh, will it blend? Will it, will it look the same color? The answer is yes. For us, from our perspective and our experience, we do not offer a full roof clean if the client does not need it. Um, and that comes into kind of what our, our mission is to worry about other people's money. Could you sell Mr. Joe on a full roof clean? You definitely could. We could take advantage of Joe and we could sell him on a full roof clean and we could downstream the other side or heck, we can even just rinse it with water and make it look like something happened, but we don't do that. Um, and we do that actually for two, two reasons. We wanna build trust and rapport with our customers because we wanna retain them. We want them to call us next year for the house and the driveway and to seal the driveway and to clean out his gutters in the fall and to clean the roof again in two to four years when it gets dirty. We wanna build trust there and so, we sell against that by saying, the second reason is, if there's no algae for the soap to really act on, um, then, then we don't want to put it on there because the, the strength of the bleach can sometimes dry those shingles out. So if you actually don't know that, that's another great pro tip that Josiah could probably go into more detail on. But from my perspective, we just do not sell that for those two reasons. We don't want to damage the roof further or damage it more than just leaving the algae up there by drying out the shingles. We also want to build trust and rapport and do what's right by people and worry about other people's money. So when I'm looking at this, I'm going to end up measuring it. Um, when we measure it, don't shoot me in the comments. I do not sit here and really calculate the exact pitch. And so there's a little pro tip. If you guys are in Nashville and you're bidding against me, you can know I don't really do that. I add a couple hundred square feet, maybe two to 300 square feet for the pitch. Because if you imagine like this, this roof is, it's, it's an A-frame like this. If you were to smash this roof down, it would be like this. So it would actually extend farther than what you would measure from GPS. So if we measure his gutter lining, it's gonna tell us a certain square footage. But if you push that roof flat, it's gonna go beyond that gutter lining. Does that make sense, Scott? 
Yeah. So basically you want to add a couple hundred square feet for, for the, for the pitch of the roof. When you're cleaning roofs, obviously you don't have to do that for a house wash. And so for me, I'm pricing this at our normal square footage charge. Um, so I'm probably going to stick with the skeleton price here because we're just going to put a ladder up against this side with standoffs and be able to hit most of it pretty, pretty quickly. I don't see a reason to go up or down based off those three D's. So the skeleton price will fit for this job. Man, something else that is way, way, way important, and this goes for selling any services that we have, is obviously setting the right expectations. If you want to have high client retention, expectations have to be set and met. Um, it also helps you to set those expectations on the front end, and if you're running into problems, you've already established a good line of communication with the customer. It's built some rapport for you to be able to say, hey, these things aren't going exactly the way we'd hoped, or this happened or that happened. Um, some expectations to set with a roof is as salesy as this sounds, if you're doing the process right, it's kind of like magic, man. Um, this thing will just clean and it will look like there's a brand new roof on there. It's not necessarily doing anything structurally, although if this stuff stays up here long enough, it can really degrade the, the surface of the shingles, make them not quite as gritty and remove some of the grit because that algae is eating away at the limestone that's in the asphalt on the shingles. But some things to be aware of, you're obviously using some really high portions of, of SH here to clean this roof. Um, and so you're gonna wanna be aware of surrounding landscaping. Like if we were cleaning this stuff in the front, let's go to the front, Scott. If we were cleaning this stuff in the, in the front with this being in the back, um, the really the only thing to consider is one, how full his gutters are. You don't want SH just rolling over that and into the grass. Uh, so you, it could be a, a potential opportunity for an upsell. You could include that in the price of your roof cleaning or somewhere close to it and then say, hey, it's included in the price. Uh, but these downspouts, man, if, if, if SH just comes straight out of this, you've now got a, a good sized spot of yellow grass that's that's been we like to say discolored here at Brown's Pressure Washing, but it's it's probably somewhat dead and needs grass seed, lots of water. And the truth of the matter is, it, it really will come back over time, but you have to make sure that you bag these things up. Josiah's got a great video. We can link that in here on how to clean a roof and, and, and making sure you take the proper uh, precautions necessary. But setting the expectation for the customer, on roofs, it's there's not a ton of expectation to set outside of if there are areas you think are gonna be hard to get to or that you're not able to clean, almost just stepped in a hole, you wanna make sure that you're able to let them know this area may not be totally clean or this area may have whatever. At the end of the day, you know how that job's gonna look when it's done. If you don't, you need to know before you do it so you're able to set an expectation to the customer if you know you're not gonna be able to reach a spot or something. That's gonna save you the trouble on a callback. They probably won't even call and if they do, you can say, well, Mrs. Jones, if you remember, we kind of chatted about that. Um, another thing to think about is the landscaping up here. So typically for us, how roof cleans go, are there's gonna be two guys here. One guy's dedicated to cleaning the roof. The other guy's dedicated to soaping, or sorry, one guy's dedicated to soaping the roof. The other guy's sole purpose of being here is to pre-soak all the vegetation with water, continuously soak throughout the process, that and the gutters, trim, fascia, stuff like that. Uh, because that SH is really powerful. It's killing the algae on this stuff. We don't want it to kill anything else that we don't want it to kill. Um, and so make sure you're prepared with that. Man, we have even done jobs where um, you can successfully do a solo roof clean where we've done jobs where we set up a sprinkler and literally just had it spraying everything while we're cleaning. So if you're a solo guy, don't let that scare you out of it. And with how profitable roofs are, especially if you're a smaller size company, your overhead's a lot less. You can have between 60 to 80% profit margins. Don't shy away from hiring a young guy or just another friend of yours for a small hourly wage or something like that to come just rinse this down, man. Like a friend can come help you rinse this down while you're cleaning the roof. Um, so, so try to remove those objections from your mind from getting into roofs at all because it's totally a doable thing. But to be aware, you know, you'll see things like, like this is kind of what it actually, ironically, we have not cleaned this roof yet, but it, it can kind of look like this if you end up spraying, uh, getting some overspray spray on these on this vegetation. Um, also, you can have like little speckles inside of here that don't look like the whole thing's just dead, but little speckles where it looks like someone almost literally just sprayed a big fan spray of something on this. So those are things to be aware of, gutter downspouts, things to be aware of um, when doing the job. 
But as for how to do it and stuff like that, we've got videos on that that Josiah has filmed, so definitely make sure to check those out. So I think that that pretty much sums it up, man. Yep. So to bring a little clarity, maybe a little closing to this, um, typically a roof of this size, if it's just a partial, uh, which it is, so just for this facing side and then doing some spot treating up in the front left where he had those trees that have, have shaded over, it's probably between the five to $600 range. And for total clarity, um, in terms of timing, that probably takes us hour and a half, maybe two at the most to, to do this roof. And that would probably two hours would probably be hoses reeled out, hoses reeled up, pulling out, leaving two hours tops. Um, so don't be, uh, what do they say? Sleeping on? Is that what they call it, Caleb? Don't be sleeping on the roofs, man, you know? Because it's a great way to have a really high profit margin and a very quick turnaround on, on bringing a big chunk of revenue in. Because of this, if we were washing this house, I mean, just a house wash on this, uh, I mean, still still worth doing, don't get me wrong, but between three to 400 maybe. Um, yeah, probably between three and $400 for this house wash versus, you know, the same amount of time to clean this portion of roof for twice twice the amount of money. So don't don't feel so intimidated. Just look up different videos. We've got videos on our channel on how to clean roofs. You know, don't let that scare you off from from trying some of these, man. Definitely, definitely dip dip into this a little bit because you're missing a good part of the market if you're not trying to get roofs on the books. So pro tips from this video would be point out other roofs to the customers. Try to get on site to point out other roofs to the customers. Um, it, it positions yourself as an expert when you can explain the difference of why it doesn't develop on the, the full side of the roof. In the most rarest of cases, it does. It also does the keeping up with the Joneses. Another pro tip would be ex, um, adding a little square footage for the pitch of the roof. Another pro tip is just do them. Just do roofs. Try it out. It's fun. A um, lot more chemical to work with for sure, but a lot more revenue to be brought in. Uh, until next time, hit the subscribe button. Drop a comment in this video. I'm happy to make content based off the questions you're asking. As you guys know, one of Scott's uh, responsibilities is to let us know what those comments are and we'll make videos catered to them. So if you've got questions about this specifically, make sure to, to leave a comment and we'll answer that. You can send an email to the email that's linked in our profile. And to get in deeper into how to actually price, how to structure your pricing structure, how to sell, how to behave on an estimate, what you do before, what you do after, check out our video courses that we filmed with Upflip. Those are all linked in the description below. Immense value in them. I'm not just saying that because we created them and spent hours and hours and hours doing it, but I really do believe we put together a great blueprint for how to start and grow a pressure washing company. So definitely check that out.